Hi, I'm Chadwick Wolf. I normally go by Chad Wolf. Uh, some personal information about me. I was born and raised in Manhattan, Kansas. After graduating high school, I attended Kansas State University to where I received my bachelor's degree in education and a minor in mathematics. I currently teach seventh grade math at Fort Riley Middle School. This is my fifth year of teaching. I also have spent the last three years coaching high school football and middle school wrestling. A little bit more about myself. In my free time, I enjoy playing fetch with my dog, go burn hunting, fishing, and remodeling homes with my brother. During the summers, I work for my dad cutting meat and working with professors on different research projects through Kansas State University. Looking at the three levels of government and how they control uh, public education, we have local, state, and federal. The support the public school receives from the local government, local school boards are responsible for funding about half of their budget. They do this by collecting property taxes on all of the homes and businesses within their district and by allowing the city council to do some of their on their behalf. <clears throat> As a result, the amount of funding available to any given school district reflects a complex set of variables, including local tax rates, exemptions, and the overall of the community. Okay. Support that the school receives from the state government. State provides for slightly less than half of schools operating costs. Most states draw the, fund, the funding largely from income and sales tax. 42 states and districts of Columbia also drive a portion of their education funding from state-run lotteries. This amount varies significantly from state to state in year to year. However, funds from the state lottery replace taxpayers' money rather than supplementing it, meaning that school budgets do not grow as a result of lotteries, rather taxpayers' money that would have been used to fill the state education budget is redirected to other areas. Okay, looking at the support the federal government gives to the schools, Congress passes a federal budget each year. It decides enough money to fund about 10% of government-run schools' operating costs. However, this funding nearly always comes with rules and regulations. In order to receive the funding, schools must comply with various requirements from all three branches of the government, okay? because edu federal education funds come from taxations. In 2013, the federal government spent $72 billion on education, making it the third largest area of spending. Some of the requirements schools have to follow to receive federal funding, uh, Every Student Succeeds Act, signed into law 2015, Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, Individual with Disability Education Act, National Assessment of Education Progress, Equal Access to Education, the 10th and 14th Amendment, and Higher Education Act. Who's in charge of the local government? You have your local school board. So I have my school board members there. They are volunteered. They are not paid. Uh, since we are tied with Fort Riley, we have two representatives from Fort Riley that are assigned to the school board. The school board selects a superintendent that is a paid position. They also select the school principals, which is paid. And then from there on, they're going to select teachers, assistant principals, and so forth. Local government duties and responsibilities. Local government have the greatest authority to create, implement, and enforce educational policy. Direct how these funds are spent. Select appropriate teaching materials offer courses slash professional development to teachers, hire and fire supporting staff members, and train their teachers. <clears throat> Who's going to start the state government? There is a state board of education, which is elected. There is a paid position. Uh, they select a commissioner of education in the state of Kansas. It's Randy Watson. That is a paid position as well. Uh, state government duties and responsibilities, develop state standards and goals, set requirements for students to graduate, set guidelines for teaching license and renewing those licenses as well. 
Who's in charge of the federal government? There's a secretary of education. Uh, that is a paid position. He also has some people that work for him. Uh, federal government duties and responsibilities. They recommend teaching strategies, ensure the right to free and highly qualified education, ensure that no students is denied the right to equal educational opportunities based on solely on race, ethnicity, gender, disability, or other protected statuses, provide uh, funding to facilities, access to educational opportunity for highly need students, including but not limited to students living in poverty and students with disabilities. Support educational research and development and gathering and dismissing of information about the scope and qu quality of the national education system. Should a manner consist with both its unique advantages, limited cap capacity, support the development of conditions to promote continuous improvement of state and local educational system. Also, the secretary and the department play a leadership role in an ongoing national dialogue over how to improve the results of our education system for all students. This involves such activities as raising national and community awareness of the education and challenges confronting the nation, uh, dismantling the latest discoveries over what works in teaching and learning, and helping communities work out solutions to difficult educational issues. The department pursues its two twin goals of access and excellence through the administration of programs that cover every area of education and range from preschool education through postdoctoral research. Uh, power and control over public schools. Uh, education is primarily a state and local responsibility in the United States. It is states and communities as well as public and private organizations of all kinds that establish schools and colleges, develop curriculum, and determine requirements for enrollment and graduation. So looking at control of power, it starts with local, has the most power, then it goes up to state, and then it goes up to the federal government. <clears throat> uh, looking at our standards, looking at 6.1, evaluate, develop, and implement management. Um, that would be the local government. It is up to the local government to make sure schools are following their missions and to evaluate their teachers slash staff to make sure they are following the expectations they set forth. Looking at 6.2, they're going to evaluate, develop, and advocate for a data-informed and equitable research resourcing plan that supports school improvement and student development. That would be state government. It is up to the state government to create a test to collect data, state testing, to see if the resources and support they are providing are helping the students to learn the standards and to also make sure that the local government is doing their job in teaching the standards to the students. Uh, looking at 6.3, reflectively evaluate, communicate about, and implement laws, rights, policy, and regulations to promote students and adult success and well-being. That would be the federal government. It's up to the federal government to create and implement laws like Every Student Succeeds Act to make sure that all students are taught high academic standards to make sure they are ready for their future either in higher education or a career of their choice. How does all of this support educational success and well-being of each student and adult? With each of these three levels of government doing their part in providing the best learning environment for all students possible, this will help mold and prepare our students for what the future holds for them as a career. <clears throat> Standard correlation. When comparing the standards to the assignment, they matched up perfectly. The assignment asked me to learn about how the roles of the three branches of government support schools and policies that are put into place to ensure equal learning opportunities for all students. Uh, relevant, going into the assignment, I thought I had a pretty good understanding on how the school system worked, but to come to find out, not all that I knew wasn't 100% correct. For example, I thought federal government played a pretty big role in funding schools, but really they only provided 8% of total funding for a school year, and most of the funding comes from local taxpayers 
in the school district. I also learned how much power the local school government has on their school district operates <clears throat> and the supporting role that the federal and state government provide to the local government. A little reflection from doing this assignment, I'll be more mindful on how the items that I asked for the school to buy for my classroom and also different conferences that I would like to go to since majority of the money comes from local taxpayers and it has to be split up between quite a few schools in my district to operate. I also can take <clears throat> I also take what I learned from sh and share it with my students when they are destroying school property like their school tablets that happens quite a bit. I can explain to them that they are wasting their own money and their process on how the school gets their money to buy those tablets. Another thing is in the future when the school board is proposing a tax increase, I can help explain to people in the community why there needs to be an increase since most people think that the federal government gives schools a bunch of money each year to operate when it's really only 8% of their total running cost. 